Oh, hello everyone. It's me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tips studio with another Tuesday Tips Live. And today we have got this little thing. Let me try and get the picture up on the screen to show you. Let me run over here and press the right button so you can see the picture of the thing that we've got. Uh, we have got this little controller. And uh, I'm just trying to find the picture of it so I can pop it on the screen for you. There you go. We've got this little controller here, the new Pioneer DDJ FLX6 to talk about. Now, I've got to open by telling you that our FLX6 is stuck about 200 yards that way in customs here in Gibraltar. So we haven't been able to get it on the desk ready for today. We will have our review of it and a hands-on very soon. But this has already caused a big stir in the DJ world today for lots of reasons. So we're going to be talking about those today and I really want your thoughts and your views on some of the, some of the points that this controller raises really because it's a uh, but well, it's quite an interesting device. So we're going to talk about that for the next half hour or so. I hope you enjoy the discussion today. Join in if you want to. If you're new to this, we're Digital DJ Tips. We're the people behind the Digital DJ Tips website, the 25 DJ courses we've got, the book, Rock the Dance Floor, the number one book on Amazon on how to DJ, and lots of other things as well. But this is our free-to-air live show that we do every week on a Tuesday on Facebook, on YouTube, on our Global DJ Network Facebook group, on Twitch, uh, on Mixcloud Live. So wherever you're watching us today, thank you very much for being here. I'm Phil Morse, and I'm going to be here for the next half hour, as I say, talking through these things with you and hopefully having a bit of fun as we look at the new Pioneer DJ DDJ F. L6 controller. So first, as always, let's get that controller off the screen now so you can see my face. Hey, here I am. In fact, why don't we leave it on the screen? That'd be, that'd be different, wouldn't it? Let's leave it on the screen today. Uh, so first, uh, I just want to get your early hellos and stuff on uh, before we take a little look at what we have got planned, which is a little look at the video that they've made about this as well. So hello to TransExtend, who just says first. Well, there you go, Trans Extend. You indeed were the first. Hi to Nikki, good to have you here. Uh, Trans Extend says, What a beauty, indeed. Uh, so, hello to Pete. Uh, hello to XX99X DJ the King. There's a name for you who just says, Cool. Uh, hi to Gail. Uh, hi to Seda. Always good to have you here, Seda. Uh, hello to Lee. Says, I'm not sure about this unit. Well, you'll get a chance to tell us what you think about it in a minute. Uh, hello to Mixmaster G from Holland. As always, good to have you here, my friend. Um, Pri says, the intro music helps me start my morning. I know it's quite smooth, isn't it, our intro music? Thank you to Joey for that. Uh, it's very stealthy, says Chance Extend. I don't know if you're talking about the intro music there or the DJ controller. Uh, hi to Papa D in Miami. Hi to Fitz in Chicago. Uh, Fortroad says, this looks like a toy. This is what we're talking about today, the new Pioneer DJ uh, DJ FLX6 controller. Uh, hi to Jack. Always good to have you here, Jack, my friend. DJ Son of Ibiza. It's good to see so many of our regulars here today. Hi, Jason. And everyone else who's popped in. You have to get in early if you want to get one of those hellos, though, because now I scroll down and we talk about the unit or whatever it is we're talking about today. However, uh, before we do that, I thought it'd be a good idea today to actually run the video that Pioneer has made. It's about a two minute video about this unit. And the reason I want to run the video is I want to talk about some certain bits of the video with you guys and girls. So let's do that now. Let's start off by just taking a look at the video and I'll stop it at certain points and we'll come back and we'll talk. Let's go. Uh, Kill. Oh, stop you can probably hear that. Okay, folks, so I paused that video there. Uh, and the reason I paused that video is that what we looked at there for a little while was what's called the merge effects. And that is where you had that, that one knob uh, where you could kind of merge together what was going on in the music and drop another track, change the genre, change the BPM and so on. What did you think of that? Let me know. So I'll tell you what was going on there. You turned the knob 
and it introduced an echo effect, which got more and more extreme as you, the more you turn the knob. As soon as you let go of the knob and hit that button, it drops a doof, like a noise or something, and then a sample if you want. And basically it's confused the hell out of the audience so much that then you can play anything next and it'll sound all right. Uh, and that's kind of the whole thing, the whole idea of that merge effect thing. Now you saw at the end there, you could decide which effects you wanted and which samples you wanted to play, but that's the idea. And Pioneer DJ says, oh, you know, you don't need to know where the verse is or the chorus or the breakdown or anything. You just grab the knob, you turn it slowly. When you're ready to drop, you press the button, it makes a big noise and maybe plays a sample and then you start the next track. Doesn't matter what key, doesn't matter what BPM, doesn't matter what genre, it's gonna sound all right. What do you think, folks? Fun? I mean, it's gonna be fun, right? Turning a big knob that does all that stuff at once is gonna be fun. It, if you know James Hype, who has course made a, has made a course with us, he's kind of, he kind of majors on that kind of massive transition between tracks, but he does it all manually. It's all under his control. This is kind of like dumbing it down to one knob. It's like James Hype's mixing skills without the skills. And I bet it's fun. We haven't got, as I say, we haven't got our unit here yet. It's arriving tomorrow once it gets out of customs, but I bet that's a lot of fun. But what do you think? Uh, is it something that's a good gateway into DJing for people or is it just like dumbing the whole thing down? That's the first thing I wanna talk about, the merge effects that we just saw demoed on that video. So let's talk about them for a minute. Let's go and get your comments and uh, ideas about this. And oh, I've still got the video play there. Oh, stop it. I've no idea why that actually my camera back there we are uh, so uh, so let's talk about this uh, I've still got a video playing somewhere this is really quite weird there we go it's gone uh, all right so sorry about that just uh, you know things happen uh, so um, so is it a competitor for the tractor s3 says DJ lv 2d uh, I think it's a little bit less yes it's a good point that is another four channel controller we'll talk about where this fits in the market a little bit later but that's a good point i hadn't thought about the tractor controller there so these merge effects what do you think let's see because you're going to have a lot uh, you're going to have a lot to say here uh, you said it all dummy one knob dj says stuart well i kind of get the idea uh, there uh, Seder says i think as long as there are other options it's a great new tool it will help get so many into it yeah it's definitely a gateway drug drug right you saw the kind of tiktok video at the end with the girl who'd obviously made a video and changed her uh, a gear and she had a broom in her hand and she had headphones on then she had four you know my daughter would love that stuff uh, coming up with a little transition and then putting all the video stuff on that's why I kind of call this tongue-in-cheek a kind of TikTok controller because it is that kind of TikTok thing uh, Christopher says I'm disappointed with the direction Pioneer is going in with this controller Al says it will be fun as long as you don't overuse it every time uh, Michael says I can imagine that effect would get annoying to the listener over and over I definitely agree with you there it's one of the things you know when they first got samplers on mixers, you've got everyone pressing the sampler button all the time, right? Playing fog horns over everything and so on. I think we will get that kind of overuse syndrome going on here. Clyde says, it seems like it could be fun as something for people to rent for their parties without requiring someone with proper DJ skills. It's a great point there. You can just, uh, you can just play and play and play without really knowing what you're doing. Uh, Leo says, it's a kid's toy. It's dumbing it down. Uh, will says, as a beginner just learning, I would like it, but I enjoy trying to make an FX blend. Uh, so thanks for that. Uh, they should have just come out with an SX4 with record box and Serato, says Kelly. We'll talk about the features of this in a minute because the features are quite a good point of this, which I do want to get on to. Uh, Timothy says it actually sounds quite gimmicky. Uh, Danny says it's geared towards rookies that don't know how to beat mix. Um, I'd like to try it, but it would be an easy escape, says Snailden. Uh, CB Bellero says I can see where this will get first time controller users to stick with DJ longer than if they went in with say the 400 or the 800. The little features will help carry them as they uh, develop skills. So again, you're kind of like with me on this idea that it might be a gateway drug, right, into DJing, which I think a, is a good point there. Uh, it feels like it's for a beginner with a little more money, says Matthew. This is about $600, 600 euros. But I guess about 520 pounds. I haven't, I haven't double checked that. Uh, Seda says, I love it to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be fun turning that knob. It is gonna be fun. Uh, I, I would enjoy it. I can't wait to get one and have a play. Um, you use it 20 times during a set and people will think you are cheap, says DJ Son of Ibiza, who decided it was worth capitals. Uh, so Carrie Beat says, what's the difference of merge versus filter and echo and then throwing a slam edit? It, it does other things. It drops in it like a sound effect and you can drop in a sample. I mean, I really do think they base this on the way James Hype DJs. Honestly, I really do. Uh, but of course, James 
has got so many variations on this that he does live. So there's a lot more nuance in the way James does it. Um, so uh, Dathy, sorry if I've mispronounced your name, says, Mayor, wrong direction for Pioneer. And why no balanced output? Next controller will be Bluetooth only. Dead and a wiping. Pioneers ask for them. Well, this has got a blue, a, a, um, a booth output, but no, it hasn't got a balanced output. Uh, Martin says the controller looks good, but the fact that it has no inputs to be able to add anything for decks three and four, uh, you don't like there. Uh, can it work with Serato DJ Pro? Yes, it works with Recordbox and Serato DJ Pro. Uh, considering this controller comes with both Recordbox and Serato DJ Pro, that adds some value, says Chris. Yep. Um, so Music Unlimited says, oh, come on, when's your next controller giveaway? Very soon, and it's a $35,000 giveaway. That's all I'm saying now. You keep watching Digital DJ Tips if you know what's good for your people. Uh, it lacks a lot for the price point, says Jason, but that said, Four deck controller, you name another one at $600 anywhere. Um, why doesn't it have a balanced output? Lots of people wanting the balanced output. Uh, so um, they could have done better with the output options. A lot of you missing these output options. This is a good thing that's come out of this. Uh, Murat says it's an exciting new controller. I'm looking forward to the details. By the way, if you do want the details on this, head to djtips.co. Sorry about this, but I couldn't resist it. Slash TikTok. I'm calling it the TikTok controller. Um, and you uh, can read a, a full write-up of what's on this controller there that we just did a little bit earlier on today. We're waiting for our unit, stuck in Gibraltar Customs. We're on lockdown here, so everything is ground to a halt. Uh, but when it arrives, we will bring you our considered review of the unit. Uh, we're ne not always first, but we always try and be the best. Uh, so let's move on now, because now I want to play you some more of that video. I'm gonna have to jump forward in the video to the bit I want to play you. So just bear with me while I get that playing and jump. We'll watch a bit more and then we'll talk some more. Hit him. Hit him. Okay, it might be hard just having watched that for 15 seconds to understand what you just saw. Let me tell you, those jog wheels are pretty big and they've got what are called jog cutter. In fact, let me get them back on screen so we can see them. Uh, I know this is uh, all, a bit, uh, all a bit messed up today, but hey, who cares? Uh, so up here, uh, those big jog wheels have got a display in the middle that shows you nothing more than the position of where you are on the track. Now that's nice, but it's got a secondary use. And the secondary use is if you press that little jog cutter button above the jog wheel, these jog wheels turn into a kind of scratch device. So what you then do is you move the jog wheel until the segment is pointing at one of six, like, you know, two, four, six, eight, ten o'clock kind of thing, or one of six segments anyway. Imagine three segments and three segments. And then you move it that way to turn it to there and you move it the other way to trigger one of six scratch sounds that you can have set. There's actually 10 scratch sounds, but you can set six onto those segments. And then it just does an automatic scratch sound over the top of your music based upon the last cue point that you were at on the track. And here's the thing about that feature. One, you don't have to be able to scratch. It cuts it in and out for you. You don't have to be able to use the crossfader. You don't have to be able to do any of the timings that you need for crossfader and jog hand when you're scratching. It does it all for you. That's the first thing. The second thing is, that looks like scratching, doesn't it? And that's what you have to do to trigger this. You literally have to push it forward to select the one you want and then move it backwards to make stuff happen. That looks like scratching, doesn't it? To anyone who doesn't understand DJ and watching you, listening to the sound coming out of the speakers and listening to, and watching what you're doing, it looks like you're scratching, but you're not scratching. You are moving to a preset scratch sound pattern, triggering a sample and then just pulling back to make that sample happen. And the software takes care of it all for you. It sounds good. You're not doing anything other than something that's very easy for a, an eight-year-old to learn. Again, people, is that good? Is it good to have something that is designed to make it look like you're scratching when you're not and to, and to actually sound all right? Is that a good thing on a DJ controller or is it cheating? Is it kidding your audience that you're better than you are? Does it really matter? Is it something that's making people think, I want to learn to do this properly now and this is actually something I want to dedicate myself to, having realised that it sounds good and that I'm not really doing it? What do you think? 
it's contentious, isn't it? It's called jog cutter and it cuts in and out. It's called jog cutter because it doesn't only do the scratch sounds, but it does the cutting on the crossfader for you as well. So you don't have to get that timing right. It's one of the first things you have to learn when you scratch is people will think when you scratch, you move the crossfader and your hand at the same time, but you don't. It's more like a one, the other, one, the other, one, the other. And that timing is a bit like this. It's hard to do and it's hard to scratch because of that. A bit like learning manual beat mixing or riding a bike. This just takes all of the skill out of it. Anyone can make scratch sounds that sound all right and it even looks like you're scratching. I think it's the fact it looks like you're scratching that might be a little bit contentious with some people. What do you think? Again, let's go back to you and find out your thoughts on this. Kill. can tell a few little teething issues here <laughs> with this system. Anyway, you're, you're, you'll, uh, you'll forgive me, won't you? Uh, so the um, uh, thoughts on this. George, I do not do scratching. Uh, I just like to buy a controller to do dance mixes on. Well, there you go. So that's not going to be there for you. Uh, do you have a unit there, says Mark? No, Mark, our unit is stuck in customs just over around the corner there. Uh, uh, and it's uh, because of the lockdown, we can't get stuff out of customs at the moment because Gibraltar is a tiny country. So uh, I'm gonna get that out of the way so I can come here. Uh, so we should have the unit tomorrow or something. So uh, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, that is going to be, uh, that's gonna be our job tomorrow to make this review. A uh, really good point here from, uh, from Jeff says, Is, isn't using sync just making the audience think you're better than you are? That's a very good point, Jeff. I mean, using sync doesn't make anything different come out of the speakers, and arguably, being able to match two records in time is not something that is in any way musical. It's just a technical thing. They're at the same speed. Whereas scratching is very expressive and very musical, and this is just scratching for you. But I hear exactly what you're saying there. Yes, it's a, it's a very good point. Uh, uh, so, um, taking the fun out of DJing, says Richard. Uh, that's super innovative, but it's a bit meh, says uh, the dark row seat. Steve here at Digital DJ Tips, our scratch tutor, said, well, if that's the best Pioneer DJ can do on their own video, that thing doesn't sound very good. Nigel says it sounds, uh, it feels like cheating to me. Uh, now, nah, I think it's best to do it yourself, to learn how to do it, says Cartel. Um, so from the demos I've seen, Jog Cutter doesn't sound so good, says uh, Suppert. Um, I really like your comment, Jeff, about is using sync making the making people think uh, you're better than you are. I do like that. I'm going to think on about what you said there because I use sync all the time now. I can manually match the beats, but it bores the hell out of me. I'd much rather press the sync button. Um, so Luke Lucas says, I don't like the fake scratching thing at all. It actually looks like you're scratching, doing babies and sounding like extra fast chirps that take months or years to learn. It is a bit like cheating. Uh, so Manfred says, I mean, I like both my DDJ 400 and my DDJ 1000 for what they are. This one's a cool toy with new tools. I mean, the big jogs are cool, the four channels. It's up to you to make the best out of it. So thank you for sharing that. Whack, says Vinny. It's like Jazzy Jeff says, says Harvey, the equipment does the work, but it can't read the crowd. I'm gonna talk about that again in a minute. Uh, can I see it again, says Keith. Yeah, you can, just head over here afterwards, djtips.co slash TikTok. We've linked to the video and everything else and we, we do a lot more talking about this unit over there as well, Keith. Uh, a great bit of, a beginner controller should be great for learning how to DJ, which this prevents, says Phil. Sure, the jog cutter and the merge effects give DJs the ability to do cool tricks with no skills, but if you ever wanted to progress or play on real gear, you'd need to go back to square one. But would you though, Phil? You're just you're not going backwards from square one, are you? You're just not progressing from square one. From square one, if this gets you hooked, is it such a bad thing? I don't know. I'm just asking the questions here. Uh, I thought this too, Richard. It's like a self-driving Tesla. It takes the fun out of driving. It's, I actually thought of the word Tesla when I was writing the review, and I didn't add it in. Uh, but thank you very much for that. Uh, and I'm all for new technology, but that's a little bit like teaching, says Dane. Phil Worrell, hello, Phil. Great to hear from you. Software cannot do everything. So much fun to be had learning to scratch. Uh, Cara Beats says, this sounds like an insult to vinyl DJs. Colin says, my mum's new controller. Um, it's only the same as putting a gator on tractor. James Abelia uses, uh, used to use that effect, although he scratched initially, says Lee. I think the thing with gator and stuff is, it's just turning the music on and off. Scratching is a whole subculture. It's a whole culture. It's expressive, it's musical. And this is just turning all that into, into what well, it used to be a button you can press on the last Pioneer controllers. On the SB3, it was a button. Now they've made it even more kind of duplicitous because it looks like you're scratching. I think that's the thing. 
so um, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one, isn't it, people? Um, isn't it a bit limiting with only 10 scratches compared to a skilled turntable? I think this is true as well. Just like on your phone, you can get all these effects on your photos and stuff, can't you? And you get little compact cameras and they can do all kinds of clever stuff, but it's not the same as learning to take pictures with aperture and shutter speed and learning to use, you know, throw things out of focus and get your, your, your bokeh right and all that. Uh, photography is an art, but cameras can do a lot of what it does that looks to the uninitiated like it is what the pros are doing, but the real pros can always pull away from that, I think. Uh, I wonder how James Hype would use it. Probably throw it in the bin, lol, says Ian. I actually wrote in the review somewhere. Uh, I'll show you. I wrote in the review here. Uh, it's, uh, it's like James Hype's mixing skills without any of the skills. Uh, it's, it's something I wrote in the review. And uh, I, uh, I actually got a text from James. Uh, saying, highlighting that, and just uh, just laughing. <laughs> so James has already seen it. He didn't actually tell me what he thought about it, so I don't have the answer to that question right now. Um, poop, says Can of Stella. Uh, so there we go. Uh, so uh, my question is whether the audience notices that it all sounds samey if you overdo the effect, especially the DJ is calling attention to it by doing the scratching action. In the hands of a DJ who understands some of the fundamentals of DJing, how to control a dance floor, counting, timing, getting the music order right. I think this, a DJ like that could pull off a really good set with this and no one would be any the wiser. That's, that's the truth. The trouble is I think DJs are going to overuse it. Uh, driving an automatic car is cheating. Driving a car with more than five gears is cheating. Old cars only had four gears. So it's a skill you had to learn. Don't use automatic or more than four gears, says Leon. I think Leon's being a little bit uh, facetious there, joking there. But the thing is, Driving a car is an art, it's getting from A to B. Anything that helps you drive a car is, is arguably okay. But is DJing art and does that mean we shouldn't be making it too easy? All interesting, isn't it? Let's play the end of the video now, people. Uh, I'll just jump to kind of where we left off and we'll just play the end and then we'll have our final talk about this. Okay, so there's a few things there. Look, it, it's a decent controller. Let's forget about the, let's forget a to, a totally about the, um, the knobs and buttons we've just shown you and talk about what it is. It's a decent controller and you saw there some of the decent features of it. It's got a nice four channel, three band EQ mixer. It's got beat effects, it's got color effects. It's got record box and Serato in the box, which for 599 is a pretty good deal. Serato has got pitch and time unlocked. It's got all the effects unlocked. Record box is fully unlocked. Uh, you get uh, a, a master and a booth output on it. It's got an aux in. All right, it hasn't got a standalone mixer, but it's got an aux in. It's got a microphone in, which is really useful if you want to be uh, live streaming with this, which of course now is the only way a lot of us are DJing. Uh, it's got full size jog wheels. No other DJ controller at any price below the big, big boy controllers has got full size jog wheels on it. Uh, it's, uh, it's got. Um, uh, it's got an aluminium top plate, or I can't even say it the way you American people say it, but anyway, you know what I mean. Uh, a metal top plate, lighter than iron, that one, that metal. Uh, it's got um, a lot of things that you would expect from a higher controller, at least a decent controller. Now, it's only bus powered. In other words, the power comes from your computer. So it's not going to be the loudest output or the brightest LEDs. I guess it's not going to be very good in sunlight, for instance. Uh, the performance pads are not RGB, they're just one color. Um, but look, it's a pretty good controller anyway. If they'd just launched this controller without any of those bells and whistles, it would have been called the DDJ600, right? And it would have been all right. It would have been okay. But they've added this extra stuff. So 
I'm wondering whether the extra stuff would actually distract people from the fact that it's an all right controller at an all right price. And I can't think of any other four channel controllers for Serato or Rekordbox that come in at around that price. I can't think of any, you know, you, you're, you're looking up to the DDJ 1000s and so on. They're like a thousand, thousand dollars, these things. Um, interesting, interesting stuff. Really want to know your thoughts. You know, the point about this whole discussion here is to get your thoughts so that we can, uh, you know, we can develop together what we think about this as a community. Um, so Daniel says, just go for the Tractor Control S4 Mark III, although, that, you know, I'm talking about ones for Serato and, and Rekordbox here, but yeah, very true. Uh, this would stack between the DDJ 400 and 800, yeah, exactly, Steve, like I was saying, it's like a 600, isn't it? Uh, it's same as the price it reflects between those two. It's a good entry-level controller. Uh, this sets a fairly high expectation to create an amazing standalone controller. That is a very, very good point. Because another like side story we've got going on here is you've got the standalone controllers getting better and better and better, right? But meanwhile, software controllers, if they want to keep up, if they want to persuade you to keep your DJ um, laptop with you as you're DJing, they're going to need more and more features. And a lot of this stuff you're not going to see on standalone controllers. I really like that point. Thank you for that. Uh, Caroline FM Radio says, scratching is like any other effect. If you overdo it, it's boring and predictable. If you're in a club for five or six hours, do you really think we're going to scratch all night? Not really. No, of course not. But we're getting into a bigger debate here about, you know, what's important in a good DJ, aren't we? But thank you for sharing that. Uh, the mic doesn't work on live stream, says Ben. It would do if you um, took the live stream output from, say, the booth output. But no, it probably won't work on, definitely won't work if you're taking the output directly uh, from USB. Uh, why four channels with no mixer inputs? Because you've got four software channels there, Mark. So you control four software channels on the unit. By the way, if any of you are wondering why we haven't got this unit with us here, uh, the reason that, that this unit is not in the studio with us is that Pioneer sent us one at the same time they sent everyone else one. But because we're on lockdown and it's had to come to another country, we're in Gibraltar, not the UK, uh, it's stuck in customs. And tantalizingly, customs is about 150 yards that way. Um, very, very, very close. Just over the airport runway uh, is DHL, and that's where it is, but we can't get it. Uh, so thank you, Lockdown, for that. Uh, so when we do get it, we'll bring you the full review, and we'll, we'll get it on the desk as we normally do. Uh, does it have DVS built in? No, it doesn't. Uh, where's the DDJ800 SRT? I don't know about that, but it would be nice to have one of those, wouldn't it? Uh, Dan says, this wouldn't work for me. It looks great, but the fact it can't be a standalone mixer, nor does it have balanced outputs. 1,000 SRT for the win, though expensive. Guys and girls, you're so chatty today, I just can't keep up with your comments. Uh, it's, uh, it's cool. Um, Pre says, you've got to try the jog cutter, Phil. It's not as easy to use as some folks may imagine. It does take some timing. I had to practice to get it to sound like actual scratching. Oh, well, there you go. So there is a gamification of scratching here. It might not be like real scratching, but at least there's some skill to it. Yes, I'm looking forward to getting the unit Pre and having a go at it and seeing, uh, seeing what it feels like. So thank you very much for that. Carl says, it's just an illusion. There was an imagination record called that years ago, wasn't there? And a great record it was too. Uh, anyway, uh, it's a marketing, marketing idea to make more dollars. As many will be disgusted as it takes time to learn. I don't scratch, I can, but I don't see it's of any use. Uh, sync just makes it quicker to organize BPMs. Uh, back to the controller, it's aimed at a younger, impressionable market. So thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, the SB3 had an early version of this. You mean the scratch effect? Yeah, it did, but it's different to this one. This one's making you kind of use the, the, uh, the jog wheels to do it, isn't it? Uh, for DJs that have spent many hours learning to scratch, it doesn't seem fair that new DJs can just cut corners and not have the actual skills to scratch themselves. There's always room at the top for great DJs and professionals need never fear amateurs. There's no way this is going to sound like a good scratch DJ. I would definitely, uh, you know, throw back at you with that. Um, by these comments, says Neil, people thrive on negativity. It may be a good way for someone to start out to learn. Yeah, it may not be everyone's go-to choice, but it will suit someone. I think it's geared for a younger market, and in that sense, it's appealing. Yes, when I said it's the TikTok controller, I didn't mean it disparagingly. It is, you know, TikTok is all about um, spectacle and using everything you can get to just make a splash. And I think some DJs on TikTok are going to do all kinds of clever things with this when they add in their video editing apps and so on. And I don't think this is a bad thing. Michael does, though. Michael says, like I said, Paris Hilton will love this. Some people like to go and buy bread. The pros like to make it, says Richard. Oh, I like that. I like that. I might steal that one, Richard. Uh, I just got here. I thought it was Monday, says Mark. Does anyone remember when I went live on a Wednesday thinking it was Thursday the other week? That had been a hard week. I think lockdown's getting to me in weird ways. Um, what are the sizes and dimensions? We haven't got it here yet. Unfortunately, Shaggy will tell you as soon as our unit arrives. Paulie says it's not good at all. It's pretending. Uh, pretending is definitely cheating. A total disrespect for the Scratch DJ. 
Uh, Drew says, I personally, uh, I personally think it doesn't matter if people think it's cheating or not. You can add all the bells and whistles to any DJ setup you want, but if you don't know music well and know how to read and move a crowd, it doesn't really matter. You won't make it until you do. And that's one of the points I wanted to make. If you don't know counting, timing, music programming, collecting great music in the first place, the technical side of DJing, because a lot of how you're gonna use this controller is the same as how you're gonna use any controller, getting the levels right, basic understanding of BPMs and, and blending tracks and so on. And if you don't have something to talk about, as in through your music, if you don't have something to say with your music, then you're gonna fall flat on your face with all the bells and whistles as well. You know, this is true. Pioneer DJ says, hey, a lot of people are streaming nowadays. They just wanna play music and make the blends sound more interesting. It works for that, but arguably that is at the edge of what great DJing is about. Uh, I think it looks like they just released the perfect Christmas present, says SBX Colors. So there we go. Uh, let's just get one or two more of your comments. If you've just joined us and you're wondering what the hell we're talking about today, well, we're talking about this Pioneer DJ's new uh, DDJ FLX6 controller. Ours is stuck in customs, unfortunately, so we haven't been, to do, been able to do our normal thing, showing you a review and talking about, and, uh, and you know, show, putting it through its paces. But we can talk about it. We have shown you videos on this. We do have an article on this, uh, which has got lots of video in it here as well, djtips.co TikTok. And Mojax, for instance, has done a great little, um, first review of it over on YouTube along with literally everyone else which is a bit annoying got to say a bit annoying for us we normally like to be in the mix when these things are released uh, but anyway lockdown I guess is getting us all in strange ways and if that's the only way lockdown gets us I'll take it uh, but anyway yeah that's what we're talking about today uh, so Michael says the majority of the negative comments are coming from an audience this controller is not aimed at it's pretty decent for its price range given that it's four channel Thank you for that. Uh, DJ Mike Marquez, as someone who uses the DDJ 400 all the time when streaming outside, this looks like a Gemini American DJ hybrid controller and that's saying a lot, remember those brands. However, the good within this is hopefully it means Pioneer DJ might make a standalone, let's get your comment back on so we can finish reading it, four channel record box only controller that is USB powered. A DDJ 600? Uh, maybe, I, I feel this is gonna be the DDJ 600 to be honest. Aiden just, Excuse me, Aiden just says, I hate these DJ snob snobs. So there we go. Thank you for that, Aiden. Um, and um, I think we're going to leave that now. So as I say, we're going to bring you a full review of this just as soon as we get it in the studio. I don't know when it'll arrive. Um, that's uh, lockdown for you. But as soon as we get one, we'll bring you a full review of this. We have got over on Digital DJ Tips. This is what we're talking about again, by the way, the Pioneer DDJ uh, FLX6. Uh, we have got here... DJtips.co slash TikTok. Uh, TikTok is my little joke, by the way, because I'm calling this the TikTok controller. We have got an article about this that you can go and look at on Digital DJ Tips, which goes into a lot more detail about this. Uh, so if you want to head over to Digital DJ Tips, this is the article. Uh, find this article here, Pioneer DJ Surprises with new TikTok-friendly DDJ FLX6 controller. Uh, and scroll down and you'll find uh, lots and lots of talk about this. Again, we link to videos and stuff here, uh, and we talk in a lot more detail uh, about what we think about it. And it's already busying up at the bottom of this article with your comments. So if it's another place, you can come and add comments uh, down here at the bottom of this piece as well. Uh, it'd be lovely to hear what you've got to say about it. Uh, but meanwhile, that's us kind of done for today. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, look, there's me with a guest, a non-existing guest, uh, another victim of lockdown. We couldn't have our guest on today, uh, but I don't want that. I want this. Back to here. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us today. We've been talking about the new Pioneer DJ, DDJ FLX6. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, please do share this. Uh, but meanwhile, this has been me, Phil, here at Digital DJ Tips, signing off as always by imploring you to get good, get out there and make the moments. And if you can't get out there, stay safe. I'll see you on Thursday for our Thursday Q&A live when hopefully we'll have the unit here so we can talk about that unit as well on Thursday. And we'll see you, I don't, not sure if we're live this weekend for our live streams, but you can catch the recording of last weekend's live stream on our YouTube channel right now. And it was a lot of fun. 15 floors up from my balcony watching the sunset. We had a lot of fun there. So head to our YouTube if you want to watch that. Meanwhile, take care folks and I'll see you again very soon.